على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا مخبرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحيناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وآناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرق فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تاتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أن أتعوا من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ظلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون نفس توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أظل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تاقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطبسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لطمسنا مسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حي ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جن محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحي العذام وهي رمين قل يحييها الذي أنشاها أول مرة 
وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم Surah Yaseen was recited by Salih Sahib of Marhuma Gulshan by Mahmud Khaku and Kul Arwahul Mu'mineen Wal Mu'minat Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha Hussain al-Gharib al-Gharib al-Hussain Hussain al-Shaheed al-Shaheed al-Hussain Hussain al-Gharib al-Gharib al-Hussain Hussain al-Shaheed al-Shaheed al-Hussain Duhai, Duhai خدا را دعای یہ دشت بلا میں ہے کیسی تبائی بہایا ہے کس نے یہ خون محمد قیامت یہ دعای ہے کس نے الہی جوان و بزرگ و خمارا گیا ہے شہیدوں میں شامل ہے ننہ سپاہی حسین الغریب الغریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین حسین الغریب الغریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین کیا جشن برپا یو اہل حوث نے شہیدوں کے لاشوں پہ ڈن کے بجائے جلا ڈال آل محمد کے خیمے سکینہ کے مو پر تماشے لگائے جو بیمار تھا اس کا بستر نہ چھوڑا نبی زادیوں پر بی در چلائے حسین الغریب غریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین حسین الغریب الغریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین اٹھی اپنے مرقد سے بنت محمد سیاہ شب کی چادر میں چہرہ چھپا کر گئی کربلا میں تو اس نے یہ دیکھا ہے وہ سیدھا کرتے میں ایک لاش بے سر بدن سارا تینوں تیروں سے چلنی پرا ہے لہو میں ہے ڈوبا ہوا سارا دے کر حسین الغریب الغریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین حسین الغریب غریب الحسین حسین الشہید الشہید الحسین تدب کر وہ چلا شبیر بیٹا لہو میں نہائے وہ سر بھی جدا ہے تبر کس نے مارے ہے سارے بدن پر 
तीरों पे किसने जनाजा रखा है कहा है मेरा लाल पास बोलो मैं पूछूंगी उससे ये कैसे हुआ है हुसैन अल गरीब गरीबल हुसैन हुसैन शहीद शहीद अल हुसैन हुसैन अल गरीब अल गरीब अल हुसैन हुसैन शहीद शहीद अल हुसैन कबीरे में देती वो माँ को सदाए कबीरों के कहती के बाबा कहा हो शहीदों का नोहा था उसकी जबा पर अब किस तरह उसके गम का बया हो हमें भी सदत हूँ नुसरत के हासिल खुदारा जहूर इमाम जमा हो हुसैन अल गरीब गरीब अल हुसैन हुसैन शहीद शहीद अल हुसैन हुसैन अल गरीब अल गरीब अल हुसैन हुसैन शहीद शहीद अल हुसैन सलवा सलवा गरीब जहराप आप ये आई है कैसी जईफ बाश सर नहीं उठती जईफ बाप सलाश पिसर नहीं उठती बदन मेरा शाह सद मो से काम पता है दिल कभी खयाम को देखा कभी सुए साहिल हुसैन रोत है हंसते है संग दिल का दिल कजा भी रोती है मकतल मैं और तन जईफ बाप से लाश सर नहीं उठती ना दिल में सब्र की ताकत ना जब्त का ये वो हुसैन है जिसके भाई अठारा बिछर गए वो भरा घर तो दर्द का मारा बिछर गए वो भरा घर तो दर्द का दुहाई देता है मकतल से ये खबर आई जईफ बाप से लाश सर नहीं उठती 
سونی جوزن و به مزدر نیه صدا پر هم بهن خیام مکرنه لگی با پا ماتم کہا ہو اصغر و قاسم بکارتے ہیں ہم کہا ہو اصغر و قاسم بکارتے ہیں ہم حسین داشت میں تنہا ہے دیکھ لے کوئی ضعیف باپ سے لاشے بھی سر نہیں اٹھتی ادھر حسین نے مظہر پکارا نام علی پہ سر کے سینے سے کھینچی جو ظلم کی برچی جوان بیٹے کو آئی ہے موت کی ہچکی جوان بیٹے کو آئی ہے موت کی ہچکی عجیب یاس کے عالم میں موت کہتی تھی ضعیف باپ سے لاشے بھی سر نہیں اٹھتی اور محمد وعالی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم So recite five times, I am a Yajibu of all those who are sick near and far, especially the request for brother Shoaib Taki and all others that are sick for the safety of the Mu'mineen, safety of Muslims, our holy places, and all those in need of du'as. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Aizad Ahuayat Shifusu. آئی یجیب المسترعی زادعا ہوا یکشف السو مسترعی زادعا ہوا یکشف السو مسترعی زادعا ہوا یکشف السو یجیب المسترعی زادعا ہوا یکشف السو اللہم صلی اللہ محمد بر حبیب کدا ختم الانبیاء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والآكبة لأهل التقوى واليكين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سیدنا و مولانا ابل قاسم محمد
ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أظهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال علي بن الحسين يعني إمام زين العابدين علامة المؤمن خمسة الورع في خلوة والصدق في القلة والصبر عند المصيبة والحلم عند الغضب والصدق عند الخوف صلوات Respected brothers and sisters in Iman, Salamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of our discussion will be the life of Imam Sajjah, Imam Zainul Abideen. Usually, when we talk about the Imam, the way our communities have portrayed the Imam is that we always associate him with the event of Karbala. Whenever we say Imam Sajjad, right away our mind goes to Bimari Karbala. I was the same way. I used to say, think the same way. Before I went to Hawza. But after I went to Hawza, I realized there's so many miracles, so many stories that our Imam has that we have never even heard of before. Before the event of Karbala, the Imam is alive for 24 years. After the event of Karbala, he is either alive for 37 or 34 years. And in all of this time, there are such events and such stories that if we recite it and if we read it, we will realize that the Imam is not only known for his sickness. He is not only known for his illness. That is a major part of his life. A few years. But that's not the only thing the Imam is known for. For example, the Imam's titles, as we all know this title, Sayyid as sajjad The one who used to do the sujuds. Now, if someone comes from an unreligious family and they give him this title, then we will say, yes, this is great work or this person has worked hard. But if someone comes from a family or his whole family tree where they are always praying and then he gets the title, then this is the work of our forefathers. Yes. Through history we see hundreds and thousands years ago, even millions of years ago, there have been sajdas going on. Yes. From the prophets, if we go back to Adam, and if you go back to the angels, the sajda or the concept of sajda has been going on for millions of years. Now look at your imam, look at my imam. And how Allah blessed him. He is the only one who is known as Sayyid Sajjad. Sayyidu Sajidi. The one who used to perform the Sajda. Now what is the reason for this? There are two main reasons. The ulama have written the imam. He used to have a farm. And in that farm he either had 1,000 palm trees or 2,000 palm trees. And what did the Imam used to do? He used to pray two unit prayer under every single tree. Allahu Akbar. Imagine praying two rakat prayer under 1,000 trees. Me and you, if we pray here, and if the Mulana recites a long surat, or he recites something long in the sajda, there's a message, they cough in the background to let you know they expedite the prayer. Yes, That is how we are. Look at your imam. Look at the work he is doing. The companion says 
the imam used to do so many sajdas that I saw that his knees used to get weak. His nose, because of the way he used to perform sajda, he says his nose was affected. The imam's head was affected. Why? Because of all of the sujoods that he used to do. And the second reason he is known as Sayyid al-Sajideen, there are many reasons, I'm only mentioning two. One of the companions says, whenever we were with the imam and wherever he was, for example, we were in a marketplace and the news came that he had a son or he had a ni'mat, what did the imam do? He dropped into sajda right away. He didn't even wait to go home. Another example is he is in the middle of the desert. A messenger comes, he gives some good news. The imam drops right in the sajda. The companions ask, O oh, son of Hussein, you could have waited till you got home. The Imam answers, Who knows if I will be alive till that time? Allahu Akbar. Yes. Our fourth Imam. Now, this event is before the event of Karbala. Our Imam, he is five years old. And there is a Kafla Salar, a caravan leader. His name is Ibrahim ibn Adham. Yes. He takes people to Hajj. He takes people to Ziyarat. One day he sees that he is going with his kafila. And he sees there is a young boy. He is walking all alone. He thinks to himself, who can this person be? Who is this child in the middle of the desert? where there is no water, where there is no food, where there is no vegetables, who can this person be? So what does Ibrahim do? He approaches this child. He approaches this boy and he starts to ask, Who are you? Where did you come from? What is your final destination? The boy responds and he says, where am I coming from and where am I going? Min Allah ilallah. I am coming from Allah and I am going towards Allah. Now Ibrahim, he asks and he says, There is no book bag with you. You have no luggage. See, nowadays we take lots of luggage. Back in the day it was the same thing. If you went to Hajj, you had to walk. And while you're walking there, you have to take your vegetables and your favorite dishes, whatever they might be, and even water to go along with you. And this trip was approximately 300 miles traveling on foot. Now Ibrahim says, why is this young boy here? Then Ibrahim says, what is your destination? Then he asks, you have no weapon with you. You have no sword with you. You have no arrow with you. You have no shield with you. What if something attacks you? And he says, where are you going? The imam responds and he says, Zadi taqwaya. My shield is my taqwa. If something attacks me, my taqwa will protect me. And then Ibrahim says, we have horses. We have camels that will take us to our final destination. Where is your right? You have nothing. The Imam says, rijlaya. The Lord has given me two feet. These feet, they will carry me to the final destination. Do not worry about myself. And then Ibrahim says, where is your final destination? The Imam says, وَكَسْدِ مَوْلَايَ My final destination is my Mawla, is my Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Ibrahim is dumbfounded. He cannot believe that a young boy, either the age of four or five, is answering in such a way 
that I cannot answer him back. Now he says, now Ibrahim is saying this. How do you know that you will reach your final destination? Yes. You have no GPS with you. You have no guide with you. There is no one to guide you in the middle of the desert. How will you reach your final destination? And are you certain that you will reach the place that you are going to? The Imam says, Alayyal Kasdo wa Alayhil Iblaq. My job was to do the niya. My job was to do the intention. His job is to make sure I reach my final destination. Yes, Allahu Akbar. How many of us have that kind of certainty? Now look at the Imam. He is in the middle of nowhere. If me and you are in the middle of the nowhere, the first thing we get worried about is I have no service. AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint isn't working out here. Look at the Imam. Look at the message the Imam gave. No matter where you might be in the world, the service of Ilahi never gets disconnected. The service of your Creator, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the one who gives you rizq, his service will never be disconnected. What do you have to do? You have to believe. Your taqwa, your iman has to be there. Even if you are in the middle of nowhere, you know that he will make sure you reach your final destination. Now Ibrahim is getting more curious and curious. He says, okay, I believe all of those. But you, you are only five years old. Hajj is not wajib on you. Why are you as a small child going to the house of Allah. Now listen to this. The Imam says, when my mother is cooking and when she puts the long branches in the fire, I see in that fire sometimes the small branches burn away. Meaning that I do not want to leave this world without seeing the house of Allah. Yes, we never know when our life will end. Who knows when your life will end? What if you leave this Husseiniya and God forbid there's an accident and we get a news that Brother Falan has passed away? Yes. It happens in our communities. We know some of our youth, they leave us at an early age. Look at the message that Imam was giving. That no matter what age you are, no matter what time you live, make sure you bring your youth with you. Make sure you bring the youth to Azai Hussein. Make sure you do not leave the youth at home. This, this is the purpose of Majlis Hussein. This is the purchase, this is the purpose of Azai Hussein and these lectures. Now, let me give you a personal example. I went to a place and there was a majlis, a lecture. One of the brothers sends me a message, Oh, Mulana, I will not come to your majlis tonight. I said, okay. Ahlan wa sahlan. The door is open. Those who want to come, the door is open. Those who don't, don't. And then I told him, Oh, my brother, remember this? Azadariya Hussein doesn't need you. You need Azadariya Hussein. Yes. I told him, oh brother, if I cannot make it to the majlis, they will call somebody else. Yes. This zikr was there, this zikr is there, and this zikr will stay till the day of judgment. Yes. And the zikr of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Yes, so the zikr of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, it does not depend on anybody. It does not wait for anybody. Some people say, oh, 
I will not go to the Husseiniya. I will see how they do the majlis. Oh, I will not volunteer today. I will see how they will do the majlis. Now, because volunteering has come up, let me give you an example. Ayatollah Qawsari was a great speaker in Iran. He used to recite the majlis at the biggest places in front of the prime minister and the biggest places. One day he says it was the day of Ashura. I left my house. When I was leaving my house, there was a mokib set up. There was a sabil set up. It was some small children. They were given chai. One of the children approaches my car. He gives me chai and he says, Oh Khatib Ahli Bayt, you recite for the biggest and the richest people in the world. Would it be possible that you can recite the majlis for us? He said, yes. When I come back, I will recite my list for you. Now Ayatollah Qosri says, I went all day because it was day of Ashur. I was busy all day. When I returned home, I sat on my bed and a thought came to my mind that I had promised those children to recite the majlis. Now Ayatollah Qosri says, I will go check. These children probably left because they were so young. Now he says, I left my house. I went to the same place. It was the same place. It was the same noha being recited. And it was the same exact children giving the chai. When I approach them, they say, Oh, Ayatollah Qawsari, we have been waiting for you all day. Ahlan wa sahlan, ya Sayyidu. Ayatollah Qawsari says, I went. I recited the majlis. After I recited the majlis, the children presented me with chai. They gave me chai. I drank it. I took one sip. I put it down. I didn't finish the chai. He says, I go home. I go to sleep. He was a Sayyid. He says, I go home. I go to sleep. I see in my dream my grandmother Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aleha. She comes into my dream and she says, Oh my son, Kausari, why didn't you finish that tea that was presented to you? He says, Oh my grandmother. That tea was cold and it didn't have enough sugar in it. Now listen to this. Bibi Zahra, she says, Oh Kosari, what do you know? When those children were preparing the chai, I, Fatima to Zahra, helped those children with my hands prepare that chai. Allahu Akbar. Yes. So before throwing away the tabarruk, before throwing away the niyazi Hussain, think to yourself, what if Sayyida, the holiest of the lady, helped out in giving that niyaz? Now moving along, Ibrahim was asking the Imam questions. Now Ibrahim says, Ma ra'aytu mai wa khudrawa. Oh boy, you are in the middle of the desert. There is no water on the way. There is no food on the way. There is no fruits on the way. There is no vegetable on the way. And I see that you have no luggage on you. How will you feed yourself? The Imam smiles and he responds. He says, Oh Ibrahim, whenever you are a guest at someone's house, do you bring the food with you or do they sponsor you? Yes. Ibrahim says they sponsor. The Imam says if the people of the world sponsor you because you are the guest, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not sponsor us when we are going towards him? Yes. Allahu Akbar. And then the Imam says, now Ibrahim, Ibrahim is narrating this. Now Ibrahim says, while I was questioning this young boy, I saw a man 
Now, Ibrahim, he was Qadi al Kubar. He had a really big beard and nur on his face. Now, Ibrahim says, I saw someone approach with a bigger beard than mine. His beard was much bigger than mine. He had more nur on his face. What do I see? This man, he grabs the hand of that boy. He kisses it. He puts it on his forehead. He says, Takaddam ya sayyidi. Tasharraf ya sayyidi. May I sacrifice my life on you, ya sayyidi. He asks something and then he leaves. Now Ibrahim, he couldn't stand back anymore. He says, who are you? And who was that man? The Imam says, that was Nabi Khizr. And my name is Ali ibn al-Hussein. Wow. Yes, you see how the Imam was in his young early age and the message that the imam gave and no matter what age you might be even if your children are infants bring them to the husseini why because of the atmosphere if you bring them to the husseini when they are infants and toddlers then they have a chance to become pious but if you leave them at the homes and let them do whatever they want, they are not going to turn out to be Salman or Abu Zayn. Yes. Now moving along, the Imam, whenever he used to eat, the Imam never ate with his mother. Whenever he was eating, he would never eat with his mother. The companions asked, Oh, Imam, why don't you ever eat with your mother? He responded and he says, I never eat with her because what if I break that piece of bread that she was thinking of breaking? Allahu Akbar. Yes. Look at the Imam's ideology. Look at his mentality. He is not like us. When we, we are shouting at our mothers. Yes, we are talking back to our mothers. The imam can't even bear to sit down and eat with her. Why? Because of the thought. What if she was thinking of breaking that loaf of bread off? What if I put my hand on it? Allahu Akbar. Moving along. The imam, he performed... 25 Hajj. Yes. And he used to walk. And while walking, he used to have a camel with him. He used to walk back and forth, but he never rode that camel. One day, a companion approaches the Imam and he says, Oh, Imam, you go to Hajj every year. We see that you are always taking your camel with you. You are walking along with the animal and you never sit on that animal. What is the reason for you not sitting on the animal? The Imam says, when the servants go to the house of their creator, it doesn't suit them to be riding an animal. I prefer to walk on the same land that I was created from to the house of my creator. Allah. Then the companion asks, what's the point of having a camel if you don't ride it? The imam says, so the people don't think I am a fakir. Yes, we have everything in our hands. Now look what the Imam is trying to say. The Imam is saying, I have everything in my hands. If I point at the mountain, the mountain will turn into gold. If I kick a stone, water will come out. But we control ourselves. Yes. We control ourselves for the fear of Allah. Yes. We have a control of our bodies. 
our thoughts and our desires. We have a control over them. Now moving along, the Imam he used to follow the footsteps of all of the a'imma and he used to give charity and sadaqah to the poor. But there was one thing that the imam used to do that the other imams didn't do. Whenever an orphan or a widow or someone wanted charity, they would approach the imam, the imam would put it in their hand and he would turn his face around. For example, he would give, let's say he gives some bread. He would turn his face around and not look at the person he was giving it to. The companions ask, what is the reasoning behind this? The imam responded that tomorrow, if I see the same person in the bazaar or the marketplace, I do not want to see the humiliation in their eyes. So I turn my face around, not knowing who this person was. Yes. Not like us. If I donate something, I will go put it on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp messages. I will spread the whole message out that I gave $10,000. Make sure everybody knows. Look at the Imam. He makes sure that no one even finds out that I gave charity to this person. Yes. How many of us are willing to do that? That is the Shia that your fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abideen, wants you to become. Now, the same camel that the Imam had, he took it with him to 25 Hajj. The Imam never hit that animal. The Imam, he never struck the animal. He never whipped the animal. And the companions ask, why don't you hit the animal? The Imam responds and he says, the one who created us and the one who gives us rizq, he is the same one, he is the same one that created them. I cannot bear to hit the animal with my hands. Yes. Now in days we have agencies who have a slogan going against animal cruelty, right? The Imam gave a message thousands of years ago. Stay away from animal cruelty. And what did this camel do when the imam passed? Now listen to the loyalty of the camel. When the camel found out that imam died, the camel ran to the grave of our fourth imam and it struck its head on the grave of the imam so much that it left this world. Allah. Look at the loyalty of the camel. Yes. In another instance, before that, let me mention the Imam. He says, Alamatul Mu'min Khamsa. The Imam says, the Mu'min, the true believers, they have five characteristics. They have five signs. Number one, Al Wara'u fi Khalwa. When you are alone, that is the most dangerous time for you. There are some sins that we do with our body. There are some sins that we do with our hands, with our feet, with our eyes, with other body parts. And then there are some sins that we do with our mind. There are some sins that you do with your thoughts. There are some sins that you think about it and it's a sin. The Imam is saying there are five attributes of a moment. And the first one is, do not sin when you are alone. When you are sitting all alone and there is no one besides you wherever you might be. The Imam is saying that is the most dangerous time when shaitan will attack you. Yes. 
there will be whispering in your ear. So make sure to avoid sinning when you are all alone. And give sadaqa when you have nothing. So after you become a millionaire or a billionaire, giving sadaqa is easy. After you land your dream job, giving sadaqa is easy. But the Imam is saying, give sadaqa when you have nothing. Yes. That is the second alamat of the moment. The third one was sabr and al musibah. And do sabr whenever there is a musibah. Wal hilmu and al ghazab. And control your anger wherever you might be. Wa sidqo and al khawf. And whenever you are in danger. Or whenever there is a time that there is a threat to you. Make sure you always tell the truth. Yes. Do not be the ones who lie. And then the Imam says, moving along, this is a different tradition. The Imam says, if one person has the following four, his or her Islam is complete. Number one, Completing the promise that you have committed with your brother or sister. Yes. Oh brother or sister, there's a majlis of Imam Zayn Abideen, 25th Muharram. Will you come? The person says yes. As soon as you say yes, you have made a promise. Why? Because the one who is sponsoring it, he or she will write your name. And they have to calculate how many people do we have to bring the food for. Yes. So if you don't come, that is breaking a promise. If you can complete all of your promises, your Islam is complete. The second one, always tell the truth. There's a brother, I know him personally. He was born in Pakistan. And a few weeks ago, he was sitting in the Husseiniya, telling everybody, Alhamdulillah, I am a born American. Yes. Do not be like this person. Always tell the truth no matter wherever you are. The third thing, when you are about to sin before sinning, think to yourself that Allah is looking at you. Be ashamed of your sin. Be ashamed of your sinful thoughts. The fourth thing which will complete your Islam is having good akhlaq with your brothers and sisters in Iman and inviting them to the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Last thing, then I will end my speech. After the event of Karbala, Yazid invited all delegates from different places to come and see my victory. He had invited people from the Arabian world, the Persian world, the English world, from Rome and different countries and places. He had gathered everybody so they could see the victory that he had done. Now what does he do? He sits all of them in front of him. And there is a person reciting the fazail of Yazid. Yes. The imam is standing in front. And this person is reciting the merits of Yazid. After he finishes reciting. The imam talks to the one now who was reciting the fawail of Yazid, the Imam talks to him and he says, Ya ayyuhal khataba. Khatib is the word he should have used. He should have said, Ya ayyuhal khatib. The one who always speaks. For example, we say, Khatib ahl bayt mulana fulan fulan. Khatib is ismi fa'il. It means the one who will always speak till the day of judgment. 
the Imam should have used the word Ya Ayyuhal Khatib. But the Imam used Ya Ayyuhal Khataba. Now, what is the reasoning behind that? Khataba means the one who speaks sometimes and the one who doesn't speak other times. Now, the historians have written that after he recited the Fadail of Yazid, two days later, this person, he couldn't speak anymore. He couldn't even say his own name. So when the Imam used Ya Ayyuh al Khataba, he was referring to the future. That tomorrow or two days later, there will come a time when you can't even move your own tongue. Yes. After speaking to him, the Imam says, I have listened to your made up fawail. All of them are not true. Now Yazid says, why don't you recite your own fadail, O son of Hussein? The Imam says, okay. If you have given me the opportunity to recite my fadail, let me start with this. O Atina Bisitatin. Allah has given us six that He has not given anybody in the world. And then he has blessed us with seven things that he has not blessed anybody in the world. Yazid says, what are these six? The Imam says, O Atina Il. Allah has given us knowledge. O Yazid, what you have is information. Most of it is false. We have the true ilm. Does anybody in your family or does anybody in your family tree have the ilm that we have? He puts his head down. Now the imam continues and he says, O Adina Hilm, we have Hilm, we have tolerance. And the imam says, Look at my tolerance. I saw my own brother being murdered. I saw my own father being beheaded. I saw my aunts being hit with spear. O oh Yazid, is there anybody in your family? Or O oh Yazid, is there anybody who you know who has the same hilm as us? Then the Imam goes and he says, O oh Artina Samahatun. Yes. Samahatun, for example, we say Samahatu Shaykh, Samahatu Sayyid, Samahatu Al Marja, Samahatu Al Ayatullah. It means Janab or Mister or Sayyid. The Imam says, O oh Sayyid, we are the only ones in this planet who can say they are Sayyids. They are connected to the lineage of Muhammad. O oh Yazid, is there anyone on the planet except me and my family who can say they are connected to the lineage of Muhammad? Yes. He puts his head down again. Now he looks around. All of the delegates, they are starting to think. What victory has Yazid done? Who has he killed? Then the Imam goes on and he says, O oh Yazid, now he remembers all of us. He remembers us. And he says, O oh Yazid, there will come a time when there will be people who will weep for us. And they will be known as the Mu'mineen and the Mu'minat. And they will have the love of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. O oh Yazid, is there anybody on this planet that will re recite your fadail or remember you after you leave? Yes. And then the Imam. Now, where is the Imam reciting this? For example, me, I am reciting in Allentown in front of Mu'mineen and Mu'minat. Imam Sajjad, he is reciting 
the fawail of himself in front of those whose forefathers and relatives ran away in the battlegrounds. Yes. The grandson of Hadar Karrar is reciting the fawail of Ahlul Bayt in the tone of Amirul Mu'mineen in front of the killer of his father. Look at the bravery of the Imam. Look at the courage of the Imam. Look how brave he was. If his grandfather was brave in the battlegrounds, he will show that same shujat or bravery in the courts or in the courtyard of Yazid. And the Imam says, My grandfather had the shuja. He killed your family relatives. I and my forefathers, we all have the same shuja. Do you know anybody on this planet or earth who has the same shuja as us? Now Yazid, he has no answer. Now the Imam goes on and he says, We have been given seven we have been blessed with seven that no one has been blessed in the whole world. The first thing, Minan Nabiyyil Mukhtar Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. O Yazid, you asked me to recite my fawail. So listen, my family lineage. We have the last prophet of the Ummah, whose name is Muhammad Mustafa, who is in your lineage, Ya Yazid. Allahu Akbar. He has no answer. Then the Imam goes on and he says, Wamina, Wamina Siddiqi. My family tree, my family relatives, they are all known to be the truth tellers. And your family and all of your relatives, they are all known as Kazibi, the liars. Yes. Oh Yazid, you were a liar. Oh Yazid, your father was a liar. Oh Yazid, all of your relatives were liars. Oh Yazid, is there a better family than my family who always tells the truth on the planet? And then the Imam goes on and he says, Minan Jafar e Tayyar. In my family tree is Jafar e Tayyar. And then he goes on and he says, Minanna Asadullah wa Minanna Asadullah Nabi Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Yazid, in my family tree is the Asad, the Lion of Allah, and the Asad of Nabi. Oh Yazid, how many Asads do you have in your family tree? Allahu Akbar. Yazid has no answer. He is paralyzed. And then the Imam goes on and he says, Wa minanna. Khairun Nisail Sayyidatul Sna'il Alami. O Yazid, we have the holiest lady of the females, Sayyidatul Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah Aleha. O Yazid, how pure are the ladies in your family tree? And then the Imam goes on and he says, O oh Yazid, wa minanna Sayyidat Shabab Ahlil Jannah. O oh Yazid, my father and his brother, they are the Shabab and the youth of Jannah. O oh Yazid, do you know anybody in your family who claims to be the youth of Jannah? And then the Imam goes on and he says, In our family tree we have Mahdi, the one who is the guided one. Yes. After the Imam finishes the sermon, he sees that all of the delegates have started to cry. 
they have started to weigh. Now, in what position was the Imam in? The, somebody asked our Imam after the event of Karbala, Oh, Imam, how did they tie you? The Imam says, My right hand was tied to my neck. My left hand was tied behind my back. And there was a chain going from the right hand to the back of my hand in such a manner that I couldn't move my hands. And then there was a talk. A talk is a chain so heavy, if you put it on someone, he cannot remove, he cannot move his neck. The Imam says there was a talk around my neck, and then they put chains on my feet. And that talk was connected to the chain on my feet. Yes. These are the days of Musibat of Imam Zainul Abidin. I will mention three traditions of Ali Asghar and three traditions of Ali Akbar. Now, when the Imam left, there's a tradition that when the Imam was leaving Medina, he took everybody except Sughra. Now the historian writes, when the kafila was right outside of Medina and they had left Medina, Abu al-Fadl sees that there is a female approaching. Abu al-Fadl approaches the Imam and he says, there is someone coming, what should we do? The Imam says, stop the caravan, it is nobody but my daughter Sughra. They stopped the caravan. Abu al-Fadl and Imam Hussein approached Sughra. Now the Imam asked Sughra, Oh Sughra, why have you come out? Sughra says, Oh my father, my heart wanted to hold Asghar one more time. Oh Allah, oh Imam, God knows when you will return. Oh Baba, I don't know when you will return. I wanted to hold Asghar in my hand one last time. The Imam brings Asghar and he gives it to Sughra. Now Asghar is playing in the hands of Sughra. The Imam says, Oh Asghar, we are getting late. We have to leave. Asghar doesn't return. The second time the Imam says, Oh Asghar, we are getting late. It is time for us to leave. The second time, he doesn't leave. The third time, Imam, Imam approaches. He says something into the ear of Ali Asghar. Ali Asghar says, Fi aman sughra. I will meet you on the day of judgment. Now Asghar returns to the arms of the Imam. Sughra asks, O oh Baba, O oh Imam, what did you tell Asghar? O oh Sughra, I told Asghar, Oh, Asghar, if you stay here, who will take the arrow that has been written under your name on the day of Ashura? Who will be hit by that arrow? Allahu Akbar. al Lillah. The second tradition, Hurmila, they say he was the best archer of his time. Before hiring him, Shimr tested him. They say, Oh Harmila, we will place an apple, and in front of that apple, we will put a curtain. And if you can hit that apple, we will hire you. Now, what does Harmila do? He takes aim and he hits that apple. After that, Shimr says, We will hire you. Being the best archer of the time, after Imam Hussein brings Ali Asghar. To ask for water. Now the Imam is holding Ali Asghar in his hands. Shimr orders Hurmila. Oh Hurmila. Shoot Ali Asghar and strike Ali Asghar in the neck. What does Hurmila do? He brings out the biggest arrow that he could find. There were six different arrows in the Arab world. The first one was the smallest arrow which they used to hunt the rabbits. The second one was a bigger one, which used to hunt 
the deers. The third, the fourth, and the sixth arrow was the biggest arrow. All of the Arabs, they had a mutual understanding that we will not use this arrow on any human being. Why? Because it was so strong, it was so powerful, that a human cannot take the impact of this arrow. This arrow was used to destroy the shields that the horses used to have. The knights, when they used to come, they used to use the arrow to break the shield off the horses. Now, what does Hormila do? After getting the hukum from Shimr, he goes and he grabs the biggest arrow he could find. He puts it and he takes aim of Ali Asghar. The first time he takes aim of Ali Asghar, the arrow drops. The second time he aims, the arrow drops. The third time when he wants to hit Ali Asghar, the arrow drops. Hormila is approached by Shimr. Shimr asks, Oh Hormila, I hired you because you were the best archer of the time. Why can't you throw the arrow? Hormila says, Oh Shimr, come here. Come to my place and come see. Every time I try to aim for the neck of Ali Asghar, the curtain of the Khama goes up and it is the mother of Ali Asghar. She says, Oh Hormila, my son couldn't even pronounce a word. Oh Hormila, my son can't even speak. Oh Hormila, why are you killing my son? The third tradition, after the event of Karbala, Mukhtar had caught Hormila. Hormila was known as Shaki ul Kalb. Shaki ul Kalb means the one who has the heart, who doesn't forgive anybody. He doesn't have forgiveness for anybody. Mukhtar asks Hormila, Oh Hormila, was there ever a time in Karbala when you felt sorrow for my Imam? Now Hormila, being Shakiul Kalb, he started to cry himself. He says, Oh Mukhtar, yes. There was one time in the event of Karbala that I couldn't bear, that I felt sorry for your Imam. Oh Hormila, what was that time? When I struck Ali Asghar in the neck, the arrow went through the neck of Ali Asghar and it went towards your Imam's hand and it stayed there. And your Imam tried over and over to take the arrow out. And when he couldn't take it out, he faced Nahri Furat and he used to say, Oh, Abu al Fadl al Abbas, oh, my brother, where are you? Oh my brother, I need your help. al azumatulillah Fourth tradition, after the event of Karbala, when the caravan approaches a city by the name of Halab, there is a lady, she is standing on top of her house, she has a stone in her hand. She wants to hit Zainab. Now she is looking at all of the heads. The first head comes Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Yes, there was a war. The second head comes of Ali Akbar. Yes, there was a war. The head of Imam Hussein comes. Yes, there was a war in Karbala. When she sees the head of Ali Asghar, she says to herself, there was no war in Karbala. She approaches Shimr. And she asks Shimr, Oh Shimr, why did you kill this young man or young boy? Shimr says, because he asks for one drop of water. And then she says, she prays that, Oh Allah, before this young child was martyred, may her mother have gone away or away from this life before this child was martyred as soon as this lady said this rubab says i have been riding with the caravan all of the way and shimr used to approach 
And he used to say, Oh, Rubab, how did I kill your Ali Asghar? Oh, Rubab, when it is time for you to feed Ali Asghar, there will be no child there. The sixth tradition, and I will end my speech. Bibi Zainab says, when our, there was one thing that the mother of Ali Asghar, she always kept with herself. When the khamas were burned, she went into the khamas, she took something out, she tied it with her, and this stayed with her. We went to Halab. We went to Sham. We went to all of the courts. We came back to Karbala. We went to Medina. And I always saw that this thing that always stayed with the mother of Ali Asghar. One day when the Imam approaches her, his mother, he says, Oh mother, how long will you stay in the sun? The mother of Ali Asghar, she always used to sit in the sun and never go in the shadow. She says, Oh, Sayyidah Sajjad, I have made a promise with Ali Asghar. Till the, my last breath, I will not go into shade. The Imam says, I order you as an Imam to go in shade. As soon as she goes in the shade, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. The mother of Ali Asghar is no more. Bibi Zainab approaches and she says, Let me open what was in that thing. And when she opens that curtain, it was the burnt crib of Ali Asghar and the remaining wood that was left. Whenever she used to sleep, she used to say, Oh, Ali Asghar. Oh, my son, Ali Asghar, it is time for you to drink your milk. Oh, my son, where are you? وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ مَا حُسَيْنِ Sham of Alo say Sajad Kahakar Tete Kyazamanata Kijab Humbi Basa Kerte Kyabatau Ke Meregar. था पर्दा के साथ बात ये कह के बहुत आहो बुका करते थे शाम वालों शाम वालों शाम वालों शाम वालों बेटियां हैं ये नबी की ना सताओ शाम वालों बेटियां हैं ये नबी की ना सताओ शाम वालों ये नबी की हर गली में शाहजादी को इस तंगर ना फिरावो शाम वालों बेटियां हैं ये नबी की ना सताओ शाम वालों बेटियां हैं कुल कफा के हल्ला के हे वारिस इन्नमा के सर बरहना हे न देखो अपनी नजरों को झुकाओ शाम वालों बेटियां हैं 
ये नबी की न सताओ शाम वालों बेटिया है ये नबी चलते चलते धल चुकी है रात गलियों में हमारी थक गए हैं कैदी बच्चे बेगुना हो को बचाओ शाम वालों बेटिया है ये नबी की न सताओ शाम वालों बेटिया है भीड़ की ये नहीं आती ये तो इस मस्त की पली है दर बदर को रुला कर मुझको न फोन रुलाओ शाम वालो बेटिया है ये नबी की शाम वालो बेटिया है तुमको हम दे दुआए दे दो कुछ दे रे रिदाए गर नहीं दे दे रिदाए तो चराओ को बुझाओ शाम वालो बेटिया है ये नबी की न सताओ शाम वालो देख लो आने नबी है हम ही ओला दे अली है हमने क्या जुर्म किया है हमको इतना तो बताओ शाम वालो बेटिया है ये नबी की न सताओ शाम वालो शम से शम मजले सिलसिला जारी रहे हम रहे या ना रहे ये आजादारी रहे शम से शम मजले सिलसिला जारी रहे हम रहे या ना रहे ये आजादारी रहे अपनी नस्लों को सिखा दे राहु मातम का हुनर सीना दर सीना करे बस ये आजादारी सफर जैसे हालात भी हो ये अमल जारी रहे हम रहे से शम मजले सिलसिला जा